Six Colorado voters, Republicans and independents, are trying to block Donald Trump from running for president in their state. They filed a lawsuit in a state district court in Denver yesterday, alleging that under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, Donald Trump should be barred from running for office. Now, that clause states that anyone who swore an oath to uphold the Constitution as an elected official and then engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States or gave aid or comfort to the enemies thereof should not be able to hold federal or state office again. Former President Trump responded to all that today in the way that only he can. What they're doing is un it's called election interference and all these lawsuits get in the way. Now, the 14th Amendment is just a continuation of that. It's nonsense. Nobody's even said um, there's insurrection. And by the way, there wasn't any guns in the Capitol. You know, the insurrection is, frankly, the people that insurrected on the election and rigged the election. Those are the insurrectionists. Joining me now to discuss this is Claire McCaskill, former Democratic senator from Missouri. Claire, thank you for being here. I am eager to know what your perspective is on the 14th Amendment being used to keep Trump off the ballot. As both a political uh, mind and a legal scholar, a lawyer, a trained lawyer yourself, do you, what do you think of the merits of this? Well, let's let's do the legal part first. Yeah, um, this is a this came into being, Alex, because of the Civil War. And this was an effort to make sure that those people who tried to divide our country and secede from our country and fought with our country uh, did not become part of the union in terms of the government. It really has never been used in this way before. That doesn't mean this is not a good faith legal effort. A very conservative, respected Republican judges have, and lawyers and scholars have all weighed in and said this is an appropriate use of the 14th Amendment, that they can prove that he supported an insurrection, a coup, uh, by lying and by encouraging people to stop the count of electoral votes. So I think it is a legitimate case to be heard. Now, what happens after this case is heard? Uh, there's a lot of complications here. First of all, it's not clear that these voters have standing. Yeah. Traditionally, in the federal system and, and even in most state courts, standing in this instance would just be his opponent. It would not be a voter. There's a question about whether or not the case is ripe for determination, whether it is far enough along in the process that the court has anything in front of them they can actually rule on. And then finally, I think we all know, if, in fact, this case... Uh, was found in favor of the plaintiffs, and it would go all the way to the Supreme Court. So this is one that those nine justices that we've talked a lot about over the last year would ultimately make the call on. Well, and, and I think there's the question, too, about whether Trump needs to actually be convicted of being involved in the insurrection, notably the charges that he faces on the federal level from Jack Smith in and around January 6th do not include incitement to insurrection. So, I mean, do you think that is meaningful in all of this, that he has to actually be proven uh, to be guilty of involvement in the insurrection or sedition? Well, the determination in the criminal case would not be um, necessary for this case. But there would still have to be proof. There would have to be proof to the satisfaction of a jury or a judge, if it was judge tried, that the facts that were presented were sufficient to qualify under the language of the 14th Amendment. Uh, I, I, I think if, in fact, a court said he could not be on the ballot, it would only be this very conservative Supreme Court that could ever make a decision to keep him off the ballot that I think the country would even come close to accepting. Uh, most of the country, uh, maybe 40 percent of the country would yeah. be cheering. But it would be very divisive. And politically, let's think about this for a minute. Does Joe Biden want Donald Trump off the ballot? Or does he want to run against a known quantity that is terribly unpopular and polling awful with independents? and Democratic voters across the country. Well, right. There's that very specific reality. And then I would, I think it's also, I mean, how, do, how does someone like Joe Biden abide the notion of his opponent being taken off the ballot, setting aside the sort of wh what that leaves him with in terms of an opposition candidate? I mean, there are, there are efforts underway in Florida, New Hampshire, New Mexico, I Ohio, and Wisconsin, uh, people writing the secretaries of state in those states, urging them not to include Trump on the ballots. I mean, imagine a scenario where in key states across 
across the country, Trump has taken off. I, I, I know that that is maybe satisfying to some Democrats and opponents of Trump, people who have not found his candidacy or presidency to be a good thing for America. But at the same time, I just wonder about the division that that sows in the country and, and how that actually would go down without some kind of crisis. Well, it would be a crisis, but it would be a crisis that would ultimately be determined by the Supreme Court. Yeah. There is no way the Supreme Court is going to let individual states decide whether or not a former president can be on the ballot. Uh, they are going to take up this question if this, these cases prevail in any state where they're even contemplating it right now. And it would take a bunch of those very conservative and even some of those Trump appointed Supreme Court justices uh, to make a monumental decision like this. I'm not arguing that Trump is not guilty of acting in a way that disqualifies him for the presidency, but I'm pretty sure Joe Biden would rather prove that in the ballot box than in court. I think you are correct. Senator Claire McCaskill, always great to see you. Thank you so much for your wisdom, Claire. It's great to see you.